Hello and welcome back to another Excel VBA tutorial. Uh, in today's video, we are going to be creating a macro that will export other macros from a different Excel workbook. So um, a lot of people know that I put most of my code on GitHub, especially the VBA stuff. So uh, I learned very quickly that uh, if I want to be able to do this, uh, in a time efficient manner, it probably makes sense to have a script that would export it for me just so that way I don't have to go inside each workbook and do all this kind of fun stuff. I can just create a macro, it will open the workbook for me, export it as a certain file with a certain name, and then from there I just upload it into GitHub. So that just kind of makes my life easier and it expedites certain process when it comes to releasing code and things along that nature. So that's what we're gonna build in today's video. So the first thing you need to do, like always, you need to go in your Visual Basic Editor. And then once you're in the editor, just like this, you wanna make sure to right click, Insert, Module, and you'll be good to go. Uh, and then with this, we're gonna call a new, what is it, new subroutine, we're gonna call it Export Module. And just as an FYI, I am sick. I've been sick the last week and it was a messy one because these are the ones where you think you're getting better and then you relapse. So to yesterday I relapsed, which was not fun. And so I can't hear, taste or smell and I have a mild headache. But regardless, it's it'll be over with soon. Okay, so first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do the variables. Uh, and then from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna declare a couple variables variables related to kind of our VB project. Um, what we're going to do is do VB proj, um, and then this will be a VB IDE, and then a VB project. And that actually reminds me, we are using a particular library in this particular uh, example. And so I do want to show you what that library is. If you see my other videos about working with the VBA editor, this library is exactly the same. All it really is, is it's called Microsoft Visual Basic for Application Extensibility 5.3. And all this library really allows us to do is access the Visual Basic Editor object model. So it has its own object model that we can reference. And then once we have control over it, we can do certain things about adding code, removing code. Uh, in this particular example, removing a module, so exporting it and things along that nature. So you just need to make sure that you enable that library and once you do that, you can declare these variables. The next variable that we're gonna declare is gonna be called vbcomp and then this will be a vbide component. No, VB component. VB component. And then uh, we need to declare two more variables. The one is gonna be called select item. This will be a variant. Uh, this is basically going to hold the files that I actually select with a dialog box. And then once we do that, we can loop through those selected items and manipulate them as so. And then the files that we're going to be working with are going to be active workbooks. And so uh, we need to make sure that we define a workbook variable just so that way we can call the properties and methods about that. First thing that we want to do is once we have our variables declared is we do want to turn off our screen updating. Uh, the reason why is because as we open new files, it will go to those ones and then things will happen, screens will flicker. I prefer to turn that those screen updates off just because it makes the experience a little bit more clean and it makes it a little bit quicker too. And so what we'll do is we'll go into our application object, we'll call the screen updating property and set that equal to false. Once you do this, you do have to make sure at the end of your code that you set it equal to true, so that way you turn back on uh, screen updating. So the first thing that we would wanna do is once we have the screen updates off is we do wanna select the files that we want to export. That's the first thing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say with the Excel application, I want to call the file, not converter property, we want the file dialog property. And so, um, and then there's kind of different file dialog ones. We want the ones where you can open it. And so these are basically allows us to go and select the files that we want to work with. I'll close my with statement. And then from here, there's a couple properties that I do wanna make sure I set about it. The first one is allow multi-select. This way I can select multiple files at once and then it will loop through and export each one of them. And then I also wanna make sure that I see my dialog box. So I do wanna make sure that I called the show method 
to kind of bring it to the front just like that. And then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to say loop through each selected item in the dialog box. And once we do that, we're going to say for each, and then we're going to call that uh, select item variable that we declared up above in the selected items property. So that belongs to our dialog box. This property simply returns all the files that were selected or all the items that were selected in our dialog box. And then all we're doing is we're looping through each one of those selected items. What I like to make sure we do is then we're going to set the active workbook to the one we just opened. So that's the one I want to treat as the active one. So I'm going to say set active workbook equal to workbooks. So the workbooks collection, I'm going to call the open method. And then we're going to pass through the file name property. Uh, that will simply be the selected item, uh, simply because that selected item uh, returns a file path. And so when we call um, the file name, like we normally do, we have to pass through a file path. And so when we loop through each selected item, we're basically just uh, working with a file path. That's it. <clears throat> and then what we'll do next is we'll declare a new variable. It's called workbook name. What we're going to do is we're going to replace the active workbook dot name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to XLSM. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say change it to that. And the reason I'm doing this is because I need a naming convention for each one of my files. So I like to make sure that I know which workbook it came from. I can't have this file extension at the as part of the name or else it gets corrupted and things along that nature. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my workbook name and I'm just removing that file extension. And then from here, it's just a lot easier to work with. So then I can use it in uh, later down the road when I need to name my new exported macro. And so now that we've kind of done, I would call the logistics, uh, what we'll do next is we'll get the VB project from the particular workbook. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this off because uh, I never declared that variable. Um, it's technically just a string, but I just don't want to go through that again. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the visual basic project for that workbook. So the workbook that we have currently selected and we're working out of. So we're going to set the VB proj variable equal to the active workbook. And then we go to the VB project property. And so that will return the VB project back to us. I want to loop through each component of that, uh, of that, what is it, that project. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say for each VB comp in VB project, in the VB components collection, again, go to the next one. <clears throat> First thing that we're going to do is we're going to check one particular thing about each project. Uh, the first one that we want to do is check the type of the object to make sure it's a code module. That's basically because there's different types of, um, what is it, different types of uh, components that we can have in a VB project. We can have user forms, we can have uh, code modules, we can have class objects and things along that nature. And so when I export one of these things and I start naming it down here, I can't give a user form the code module extension. And so we just have to be very careful about which type of component that we're working with. And so all we're going to do is we're going to say with the VB comp dot type, if that equals VB text uh, and then it's just the standard module, then we can proceed forward in the process. And again, I will close off my if statement. And so once we're here, what we can do now is I like to kind of give feedback to the user to make sure that it's working. So let the user know the uh, process is continuing. And all that I do to just kind of give them some feedback is all I do is I just print out the VB comp, so the component, and I just call the name property. That's, that's really all I do. This just lets them know, okay, it's exporting. Because sometimes the process does take a while if you've selected 
uh, multiple files. And I just kind of like to give feedback to the user that, hey, you're not crazy, it's still working, so just let it finish its process. From here, we need to create the file name. This is probably one of the more longer parts, but it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna create a new variable called file name. And we'll do lowercase. And then what we'll do is it needs to be a place where we wanna store it. I store mine on my desktop. And so what I do is I say users forward slash Alex and then desktop. And then I have a folder called files. And then from here, now I'm gonna start putting in the different components. The first one is the workbook name. And then what we're gonna do is I like to make sure that it's an underscore, underscore, uh, plus <clears throat> the VB, no, VB comp dot name, and then plus the file extension, and that is it. So this is our file name. So it's just simply the location, the name of the workbook, the name of the file with its uh, extension at the end. And that leads us into our next one, which is now we can actually export the file. And so we can export the file. What we'll do is we'll go to the VB comp, and then we'll go to export, and then I'll pass through a file name parameter and that will equal the file name variable that I declared right above this line of code. And just a few more steps and we are good to go. So I'm good here, I'm good here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this right up here and then I'm gonna close the active workbook because now I'm done working with it. So I'm gonna say close the active workbook and that will be the active workbook and we'll simply call the closed method then it will go on to the next one and then uh, export those modules. And then after that, we are finished with it. So we just need to do one last thing, which is we need to turn on screen updates. <clears throat> and so we're gonna go into the application object. We're gonna go into the screen updating property and set that equal to true. So that's pretty much all the code that we need. It's not too, too much. A lot of it, you could actually make it shorter if you want, if you just, kind of took out this part where we're going through the selected items, but I like to make it a little bit more uh, user friendly in the sense of this way you can just select your files, you don't have to do anything else, and then you've got a, a consistent naming convention where you don't have to constantly pass through different things that are just gonna you know, make the things uh, not work. And so it's gonna go right in here in this file. So what we'll do, hopefully it works the first time, who knows, it never does sometimes. We just select the different ones. So maybe I want the chart object, and then maybe we'll do, uh, I don't know, run Python script. Of course, it didn't work, right? <laughs> it always does this when it's first couple of times. It never actually, oh, I see why, because I forgot to put a T in there. That would make a problem, unfortunately. So yes, you do have to make sure it's spelled correctly. Um, I think that was the only one. So we'll do the chart object. We'll do the uh, that one in the run Python script. No, that's working. Oh, I misspelled it again. Jeez. This is what happens when you are sick. You just make stupid mistakes. Chart object, run Python script. Okay. So it's working in the background. As you can tell, it did export it. So that's great. And now if I go in my folder, I have all of these wonderful little things and I can actually open it with a notepad to kind of show what it looks like. And then that's the code. So pretty useful. Um, definitely, I encourage you guys, if any kind of code that is really useful to have, it's definitely this one. You can do the same logic when it comes to, <clears throat> what is it, PowerPoint, uh, word, uh, the logic's really the same, it's just you gotta now change kind of the objects that you're working with. We're in Excel, so we work with workbooks, but in PowerPoint, you work with presentations, with Word, you work with documents. So you just have to know the particular object that you're working with. And then once you know what object you're working with, it's pretty much exactly the same code and you're usually good to go. So 
With that being said, if you have any questions about what we covered today in today's video, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you. Also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. Uh, we're growing the channel. It's been definitely getting up there in size, which is nice. We're not 100,000 users, but we're almost close to 1,000, which is nice. Um, and then also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates and you start uh, kind of keeping up to tabs as we release new videos. So thank you again for watching, everyone. We will see you in the next video.